Spike A.K., whose presentation tonight yeah. is all about poetry. He's got some great activities. I've seen the size. Jason, what do you think? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, looking forward to a great, great meeting and chatting with Spike before we began. And people come into the room. It's great. And uh, let's do this. Okay. Oh. Like we're going to get out of your yeah. way. You got the hour. We'll be yeah. in the background if you need us. Just holler. We're right here. Okay. So yeah. I'm going to move over to your okay. slides. Everybody hang on. Watch this, everybody. Hang okay. on. Say, Whoa! Oh. <laughs> you just okay. missed us dancing and singing, Rachel. That's all. But here we yeah. go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I give okay. you yeah. Mr. Psych. Enjoy, a everybody. Okay. Hello, everybody. Good morning, Argentina, Brazil, Chile, USA, and good afternoon, UK, France, Italy, and many other European countries. And good evening, Japan, and India, and many Asian countries, Australia. And uh, I am from Kerala, India. And uh, it's uh, raining here. And uh, for the past um, three months, uh, we have been enjoying continuous rain. And right now we have um, 14 participants. And um, just uh, I would like to welcome you all. And uh, welcome Adi, welcome Aziz, Sobai, Brian B, and uh, C the P, Mark Brown. Rachel and Cheryl and uh, many others will be coming here into this room and um, uh, it's 6.30 p.m. here. First of all, thanks to ITDI and gallery teachers for giving this wonderful opportunity for me and uh, before entering into my presentation process, I would like to share my ELT experiences i mean how i became a virtual presenter i think it was in 2009 i got uh, i met stephen erder through a skype meeting at the annual Eltai conference in chennai india and uh, the mr stephen uh, did a wonderful presentation and uh, at the end part of his speech, uh, his email was given and I just uh, took that mail and uh, just noted that mail and uh, mail ID and then I just sent an email to him and later he called uh, me and uh, uh, within one month or two months we became uh, friends and uh, at that time ITDI's its initial steps was uh, taken place and uh, I was one of the testers of ITDI lessons and um, all you can see you can say uh, tasters and uh, uh, then and then together with uh, Stephen Herder um, I did many virtual conferences and webinars for the students of India and uh, later through um, him, I met a magnificent Barbara Sakamoto, Scott Sunbury, and Chuck Sandy, and Jason, and many, many, many other people. Um, through ITDI, I got um, uh, more than 100 ELT friends all over the world. And um, I met some of them in real uh, at the last uh, ITFL Manchester conference. And my topic here is uh, teaching English through poetry of other languages. I am from India, as you know, and we have more than, uh, uh, as per the last census here, we have more than 1,200 languages in India. And definitely English is our second language. First language will be in most of the states, it will be uh, or its uh, mother tongue and the uh, third and fourth languages will be different. In primary classes we teach uh, four languages including English. 
So number first L1 will be Malayalam or uh, any other mother tongue and L2 will be English and L3 will be national language Hindi and L4 will be Arabic or something like that Tamil Arabic Canada like that and even there's a provision for learning French and uh, other European uh, languages and uh, I love poetry uh, because uh, it's the heart of a language and uh, I remember poems and go on is the summer Summer has gone away, now the wind come to stay here And though the seasons of the year are filled with my own dreams Gone is the summer, the summer has gone away We ha have the history of poetry um, as uh, it's from uh, uh, 400 as it, uh, four, 400, just 400 years ago, 4000 years ago, we found poems um, uh, of San, in Sanskrit in Rig Veda and uh, in the stone, the Luji tablet carved in stone of the Glamish epic in Akkadian language. And only 4000 years uh, we have uh, the history uh, with us as in the case of poetry. And uh, I have a question to you all that uh, what's poetry? Oh, uh, how you can define poetry? How you can define poetry? How you can define poetry? Is music set to words? Oh, check. Poetry is the mirror that reflects our deep thoughts. Adi from India. Words structured to create resonance and mood in listeners or readers. Rachel, the language of emotions. Thank you. Poetry is words from our soul. Then. Poetry is the conversation we otherwise couldn't have had. Song of the heart. Yeah, okay. Okay, it's coming again. Yeah. Poetry is the nice set of words set in a musical fashion. As is Subai. Beauty and intensity of emotion. Okay, okay, just... I have something. Poetry can be dangerous. It's by Rumi. Can be dangerous, especially poet, beautiful poetry, because it gives the illusion of having had the experience without actually going through it. Rumi. And another one. Poetry is just the evidence of life. If your life is burning well, poetry is just the ash. Yeah, how is it? By Leonard Cohen. Yeah, another one is a couple of. If I feel physically as if the top of my head were taken off, I know that's poetry. Emily Dickinson. Poetry is a journal of a sea animal living on land, wanting to fly in the air. Paul Sandberg. Poetry is nearer to vital truth than history. Da Vinci. The other one is interesting. Don't use the phone. People are never ready to answer it. Use poetry. <laughs> okay, then we can move on. Yeah. If we think of having poems in English classes, especially when there is English is taught as a second language, it must be, we can take uh, the poems from first language or from the third or fourth language. And uh, in my classes, normally before discussing a lesson, I 
give a plenty of pre-reading activities. I mean, uh, and I use poetry of uh, Malayalam and uh, Hindi, Tamil, etc. at this context as entry activity of a lesson. For example, if uh, for a lesson entitled Roots, Roots means some roots, I gave a Malayalam poem by O. N. V. Kuru to the students and I sang the poem in the classroom. It's in Malayalam. And uh, as they know the, me the meaning in Malayalam, it's very easy to transact. And uh, my aim was to give the gist, the roots, the theme of nostalgia in their mind and then I uh, could uh, begin the lesson. They could easily understood the theme of nostalgia by hearing the poem. And uh, as the here, it's very, uh, it's uh, not uh, so. It's not so good to load um, video and audio. Just I can um, read the poem right now. Forgive me for my <laughs> voice. I just can't see it now. It's a poem by O. N. V. Karup, written uh, in Malayalam. I uh, sang it uh, in the last month when the unit was taken and uh, please listen irulin mahanidrail ninnunartini niramulla jeevitha pili thannu ende chiragin aagashavum nee thannu ninnaatma shikharathil oru koodu thannu aatma shikharathil oru koodu thannu ഒരു കുഞ്ഞു പൂവിലും തളിർ കാറ്റിലും നിന്നെ നീയായി മണക്കുന്നതെങ്ങു വേറെ ഒരു കുഞ്ഞു പൂവിലും തളിർ കാറ്റിലും നിന്നെ നീയായി മണക്കുന്നതെങ്ങു വേറെ ജീവനൊഴുകുമ്പോഴൊരു തുള്ളി അറിയാതെ നീ തന്നെ നിറയുന്ന പുഴയെങ്ങു വേറെ കനവിൻ്റെ ഇതളായി നിന്നെ പടർത്തി നീ വിരിയിച്ചൊരാകാശമെങ്ങു വേറെ ഒരു കൊച്ചുരാപ്പാടി കരയുമ്പോഴും നേർത്തൊരരുവിധം താരാട്ടു തളരുമ്പോഴും കനവിലൊരു കല്ലു കനിമധുരമാകുമ്പോഴും കാലമിടറുമ്പോഴും നിന്റെ ഹൃദയത്തിൽ ഞാൻ എൻ്റെ ഹൃദയം കൊരുത്തിരിക്കുന്നു നിന്നിലഭയം തിരഞ്ഞു പോകുന്നു അടരുവാൻ വയ്യ അടരുവാൻ വയ്യ നിൻ ഹൃദയത്തിൽ നിന്നെനിക്കേതു സ്വർഗം വിളിച്ചാലും അടരുവാൻ വയ്യ നിൻ ഹൃദയത്തിൽ നിന്നെനിക്കേതു സ്വർഗം വിളിച്ചാലും ഉരുകി നിന്നാത്മാവിനാഴങ്ങളിൽ വീണു പൊളിയുമ്പോഴാണ് എൻ്റെ സ്വർഗം നിന്നിലടിയുന്നത് nityasatyam yeah uh, see the p of tunisia i know you haven't understood a single word <laughs> it's a poem about um french invasion in india and the french people were going back to france when india got independence from the britain and uh, there was a pro uh, province uh, that in which the french were ruled and that nostalgia of uh, departing from india of the french people is given in the in this poem by owen wickel and uh, by the by singing this poem uh, just uh, uh, the the students knew the theme actually the theme was just the nostalgic elements uh, and uh, about the roots of us of family and uh, and all that things and uh, yes people could uh, understood what a poem is and uh, simply i could trans uh, transact all these things and uh, uh, it was amazing in the classroom when the when the response and uh, i in this case uh, teaching english through other languages uh poems 
in this case we can use family poems i used family poem last uh, last month and as i said from a familiar language and and also i tried unfamiliar poems from unfamiliar language in my classroom and many of my friends helped me and uh, uh, in translating these poems and they sent me sent me the details and uh, i took the help of my uh, uh, teachers my dear friends from friends of my pln i think uh, you know them it's a lutmila and uh, maulin and uh, i often i regularly contacted with these persons and uh, i regularly contacted this person and uh, just uh, you can see a poem sent by uh, it's a and the poem is in indonesian language and aku is the title aku aku means i and uh, she typed the poem in indonesian language first and then as per my request she gave the presentation and uh, its pronunciation and the, it's, it's uh, written in english alphabet and uh, the pronunciation and uh, after that it's translation okay then uh, i just um, went through the poem in indonesian language and uh, um, understood the pronunciation and just did it in my classroom without knowing any single word in indonesian language i could uh, read the poem in my classroom and uh, later i gave them its english translation so uh, and by this i could uh, uh, introduce the theme of my lesson and uh, that here the name title of the poem was i and the translation is like that I, you can see that and also lutmila sent me uh, many Russian poems, and uh, and and also she gave me uh, the translation and uh, its pronunciation and the link video links and uh, just I could do that in my classroom and uh, after that Maulin Maulin uh, is from Germany and Maulin sent me the poem German poems and also from uh, also Jamaican poems. and i could use all these things in my classroom and uh, if you are willing you can do this and uh, next thing is uh, poems taken from the web poetryinternationalweb.net is a site that gives uh, most of the poems and their translations here is a poem in my language malayalam and um, right side you can see the translation in english both these are written by the same poet both these are written by the same poet k sachidanandan and the cactus just um, use tones are my language i enhance my existence with a bleeding touch once these tones were flowers i love the lovers who betray boys have abandoned the deserts to go back to the gardens only camels remain here and merchants who tremble my looms to dust one thorn for each one drop of water i don't am butterflies and it's going on like that and the malayalam the translation is ullugalana ende sharira bhasha chore yuttikkunna oru sparsanathilude oru jeeviyodum njan ivide undennu njan vilichu parayunnu actually uh, Uh, I, I, i would like to um, read the whole poem in my language but uh, <laughs> yeah yeah, uh, yeah okay then so these kind of poems <clears throat> will be uh, yeah uh, check says please <laughs> okay uh, <laughs> yeah the, 
yeah, I, I'll do that. Check, I'll do. And <laughs> okay, in, in the later part, we can do that. Uh, yeah, there's a book with me and many other poems with me. If we, if we get time, we can do that. Uh, and uh, yeah, no shy. See the pee. <laughs> I can do that. And uh, the next, next is choreography of the poem in another in other language by the students you can see my students here is my classroom you can see my students and um, they are having uh, they are conducting a choreography of a poem in hindi and uh, just they are enacting dancing singing with the poetry and after this after this just I'll play normally I uh, play um, audio and video with English translation okay and then uh, the students will be able to understand the meaning and uh, definitely they can improve their English and uh, interest can be uh, yeah yeah okay they are um, uh, the whole class will be the in a mode to listen poems and uh, like that and uh, i think uh, choreographing the poetry is also an easy method for the persons who teach english as the second language and also i normally give picture poems picture poetry in malayalam in hindi in arabic in any 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 other language <clears throat> they are good formations <clears throat> Evil Tower, there is a poem entitled Lethal Tower and uh, okay, mm, Matthew Noble, welcome Matthew Noble, okay and um, picture poems can also be used in, uh, yeah, yeah, <clears throat> Jason, <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's nice Jason, I normally use picture poems in my classroom and uh, interestingly, <clears throat> I used, mm, Arabic poems in my classroom and those people you uh, know a new Arabic uh, they can simply uh, come into the way and uh, theme understand the theme and the nextly poems and their translations so um, in the first level I just said that as an entry activity we can use poems in the classroom poems of other languages we can use them in the classroom uh, thematically we can just and in, in this case just poems and their translation what uh, these can do in the classroom uh, use the poem in L1 or L3 or L4 in the classroom and then by using this uh, you can recite the poem or the children or the student learners can recite the poem and after the recitation of the poem just you can help the learners to translate them to English. My student, you, you won't believe that. My students easily translated the poems into English. I just gave them 7-8 English dictionaries, English Malayalam dictionaries, and then they translated the poems in one within one hour. Amazingly, yeah, and uh, give, and also at the same time we can give other poems in their family languages and to tell them to translate. And this idea worked, really worked, and uh, I had many translations together and just I formed a book. Just for the class, for the school only, just I just, with, um, I formed a book and a bind and with that I presented uh, with to, uh, to the my headmaster and this is really great and another thing is uh, Skype poetry reading Skype poetry reading will be really working out because with the help of my friends in UK my relatives in UK I normally present Malayalam poems and Hindi poems through or over Skype and um, 
it's very easy because uh, I can simply do that and uh, the person in the other edge if it is in a it's an Arabian country in Dubai uh, or, or any in Bahrain Iraq Iran something like that they can simply they can simply do, do that and uh, uh, say um, my student can listen the poem in Arabic in Hindi or in any other language even in Japanese you know I tried to learn Japanese last week <laughs> you know for to uh, present the poem here but I it couldn't it didn't work out because Shanshin language I couldn't <laughs> be able to deliver a single word and just <laughs> I uh, just I <laughs> okay Barbara is typing something <laughs> okay so mm, <laughs> no, Bob not the full language just some words in Japan Japanese not the full language just some just some, some words <laughs> just some words <laughs> okay Bob and uh, <laughs> okay so Skype reading is really it will be it will be working out and uh, you can simply uh, just do that and another thing is bilingual edition of poems we have a variety of collections of bilingual editions of poems here in the library We seem to have a freeze going on. So just everybody hang tight. And um, if Psyche can hear me, we'll probably just leave the room and come back again. This is great. That's a good this idea. I just love That's a good idea. Psych, psych read the poet. Psych read this poetry that he's doing. We'll just wait for him to come back in. It's really, really fun. I have to confess that until this very day, I've never heard Leo, Leam spoken, especially in poetry. So we're going to look for for Skype and hope he comes back. Oh, well, <clears throat> yes, I have a course on poetry coming up in uh, September. It's the, an ITDI advanced course. I don't want to steal Sykes Thunder here, here at all, but it's a good segue. And before the session started, Syke and I were talking about, he writes poetry and I write poetry. And uh, more than that, though, I'm just a, a fan uh, of poetry and I spent a long time studying with was lucky enough to, to study with some pretty well-known poets so anyway the point of the class in September is not just about about poetry but it's about how how to use it in the classroom in a kind of an interesting way 
And to, for several years when I was at university, I led uh, a seminar. We had about 15 students. We'd sit in a circle. Every class, someone would bring, everyone would bring a poem, a poem that spoke to them in some way. We had lots of resources for finding, finding the poetry. And in addition to the poem, they would write um, a couple of hundred words about what the poem meant, meant, means to them. And they would make copies of this. They would pass it around in, in, a, in a circle, and they would read what they'd written out loud. So it became a writing workshop as much as it was about poetry. And it wasn't about the meaning of the poem. It wasn't, about, I, at first I tried to say a few things about the poem, like this is a poem it's by this person. And a lot of people think it means this. And then after a while, I just shut up. And I let them really develop their I, I, ideas. So what would happen in the, the class was something really interesting. <clears throat> I think maybe you might've seen me post something in the chat earlier that poetry is the conversation that we otherwise couldn't have had, which turned out to be exactly true. Someone would find a poem that just spoke to them. They'd just recently broken up with someone or they'd, they'd been through something difficult. And this poem that they found and brought in to share, they'd read aloud and they'd read, they'd read the 200 words that they'd written, allowed them to, to speak about it. So instead of really focusing on that, we use poetry as, as a launching pad for, for writing. And what we decided to do after a while was to take these, these responses to poetry and really focus on developing those more. And at the end of every semester, we turn that into a book. So it was a combination of using poetry as a launching pad and then the, the, the writing that took place because of, of the poetry. And that's what we're going to do in, in my class. So we're going to be in September. So it's going to be about using poetry to focus on writing. So it's going to be a, a writing workshop. And I want to try to take this experience that I had in a tea house in Japan with uh, a group of students and see if we, we, we can do it online. So in addition to the poetry that we're going to look at, that people will bring to the class along with their writing. We're also going to, um, Steve is messaging me here, so I'm just gonna see what that message is about. Sykes seems to have crashed. So in addition to uh, that, I'm going to be sending people a poem a day that we can also respond to. So it's, it's a little different than most of the ITDI classes so far, we are going to meet four times. We're also going to receive, a, you'll receive a daily email with a piece of writing that you can choose to respond to or, or not. So that's what that class is all about. The news about Psych is that he seems to have crashed. There's no response from him on Facebook right now. There must be a power outage or something going on where Psych is right now. So we just ask you to, to be patient. Maybe Jason would come in and do a little something. Uh, absolutely. What do you think, Jason? Are you around? But uh, you're going to need to suit up, as we say. But you're going to need to suit up, <laughs> as we say. Thank you. So you might... <laughs> Jason, you had a class yeah, last night. Was... Can you tell us about that? We had two classes uh, going back on. to back. Speaking of poetry, with, uh, it was yeah, it was poetry is life. Uh, do you back need back. do you need previous knowledge or experience to get in the class? Oh, there you go. No, you don't. Well, let's see. Tell us about we the class. We had a um, great time with the students talking about the importance. Of, I'm still getting. I don't know what it is. Um. Uh, talking about the importance of exercising outside of class, but not the physical exercise, but rather stretching the speaking muscle, working out those listening skills. And with the teachers, we did the same thing, but the perspective of how teachers can help students do that. So it was a lot of fun. And since we have a bunch of poets in the room, 
Well, the course. Tell us about your course. The weekly English workout. Well, you always see me doing this now. Yeah. I'm not actually a, <laughs> a workout in the gym guy, but as a teacher, I'm a, I'm a big, big into practice guy. And I love when students get that practice naturally through songs and poems and TV shows and movies and games. Uh, so the weekly English workout is a program I'm doing where I'm the coach in the gym, as it were, and it complements what teachers are already doing, what students are already doing in the classroom. Uh, in one sentence, I'll just say teachers, you know, struggle often to, they've got great communicative activities to do with their students, but really hard when the students haven't had enough exposure to the language here and here, but teachers don't have enough time for that. So my idea with this course is to work out with the students so that they can go to class and both students and teachers can benefit. There you go. Yeah, we had a lot of fun. I great. was thinking we have. Some... Yeah, yeah. Good. I thought. Why, why don't I mean, we? You mentioned that we have a lot of while we're waiting. Room. How, how many... um, maybe we could uh, get a few things in the chat, like maybe uh, favorite favorite lines or things that people have done, or it could be from other po poems, and it could be different languages as well. You don't have to be a poet yourself. You could also choose something from somewhere else. In fact, you know, it's Chokey's here. Ah. Chokey, do you have um, a microphone? Because if you do, we'd like to hear a couple. Of, we'd love to hear a couple of your poems. And Stephen just suggested that we do a, a collaborative poem together. I'm just reaching behind me to to pull out uh, a couple a couple of books. Cool. This entire shelf behind me is all poetry. I don't get to share that with too many people very often. I just pulled out uh, a random book. Maybe we could yeah. do a little something together. I was just going to say, I mean, one... And Jason is all about poetry, isn't he? One way we could collaborate uh, if... ...and then I can wrap the chat, as we say. So okay, that sounds, like, that sounds like a really good idea. While well, I, I pull out some, while well, you're pulling it, yeah, out of place, writing together so. on a summer night, you 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 start to you start that, and then I'll pull something together. I like Stephen just sparked it. Writing together on a summer night, someone needs to put something in the chat that might rhyme with that, and make our visit. I did a rap last year, yeah, but I can't think what is it, or what was it. You say you can't do poetry, but that doesn't make sense to me because we're all poets inside. Just let it go. Get out there and just ride. Put some fodder in the chat box. I'll put it in the rhyme. We could do this together. I like to do this all the time. But I see nothing happening. We need to get they cooking. Are you trying to think? Trying to listen, are you looking? Just put it in the poem, in the rap, in the prose. Just let yourself go, I'm telling you, that's just how it goes. <laughs> Hard to listen and think at the same time. Is that right? Well, then I'll just shut up with my rhyme and let you all chat. I'll go somewhere else to rap. <laughs> Maybe I can go hang out with the cat in the hat or eat some green eggs and ham. It's unbelievable to Pam. I mean, Priscilla, I know your name. <laughs> Together we can catch fame. How do I do it? It just comes right off the dome and I got a shiny one. Look, I'm shining in my home. <laughs> Reflections and rays bouncing off the walls. Come on, everybody. Think big, think tall. Aziz sat on his couch thinking of the humdrum into which it was sinking. That's what he was thinking. I know Aziz is a poet. Keep on and don't stop. Barb, yes, my wife gets terribly tired of hip hop, but she doesn't get asked to rhyme. I'll leave her out of that. 
And Mark Brown says, Sykes gone, but we're all afloat. How's that? Because we go together flying high. Any kind of weather across the sky, across countries and cultures. And every creed, ITDI and gallery, here with what you need. <laughs> Come on, Aziz, I know you got more than that. And see, the P must have stepped out. You know, just tipped his hat and said goodbye. Oh, Sykes back. Hello, here we go. Let's get off the TV because this is all about his biz. Peace. I was just thinking about a poem I've been thinking about a lot. So Gary Snyder, who is uh, somebody I, I, a poet I love, it's about <laughs> this present moment which lives on forever. And it was just really enjoying this present moment right now. That we're waiting for Hello. Time. So Hello. 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 Uh, uh, thank you. I, I, <laughs> I don't know what happened. Glad you, glad yeah, my pro. <laughs> yeah. Stephen pointed out that you, you, are, you are really good with computers. My, my connection were, was lost. That was the signal, and I don't know. In the modem, my provider. <laughs> this is the first time <laughs> in my life. <laughs> okay. Um, we have been discussing about. Hmm, okay. By bilingual edition of poems, I was about to some of the topics and it is the last. And uh, here we provide bilingual edition of poems by the poet himself. And I have one poet with me, A. V. Sandosh Kumar. He is my friend. And here many many poems are there and the poet himself wrote English okay and its other languages edition okay like like this one there are many writers in India they use bilingual edition of poems and this helps in the classroom really is very interesting and then by this so heiku poems we can have uh, just the students will be highly motivated uh, this also very practical in the classroom and my students really enjoyed doing this in the classroom and I have some other things with me and we can discuss it right now uh, poetry is an Hindi poetry and uh, Hindi poet is the poem Bachpan and I use Hindi poems in the classroom by giving a stanza in Hindi and then its English translation uh, sometimes I ask the students to translate them into English Baspen means childhood. Chinkar Kilaune ko bite the egg. So here, please listen. The language is different. Earlier it was Malayalam and now it's Hindi. Chinkar Kilaune ke baat the egg. Baspen se dur baud dur hue ham. By snatching away the toy, we shared sadness. We have gone for very far from the childhood. This is the very idea of William Wordsworth. Visible childhood and invisible childhood. I think all you know. And uh, it resemblances versus poetry. Angresi shabdong ka padna padhana Kar ake diya hua kam nibhana Homework karne me full jaye hum bachpan se dur bhout huye hum. Listen the meaning. The learning and teaching of English words, finishing assignment after coming home, doing homework make us breathless. We have gone far, very far from our childhood. Angresi sabdunka padana padana. Like that. Angrezi is English. 
so thank you for listening to this one and as chuck asked for me to sing malayalam poetry i have something with me pandrandu makkale petturamme ninde makkalil nyanaanu bhrandan pandrandu makkale petturamme ninde makkalil nyanaananaadhu എന്റെ സിരയിൽ നുരയ്ക്കും പൊഴുക്കളില്ല കണ്ണിലിരവിന്റെ പാഷാണ തിമിരമില്ല വാഴ്വിൻ ചതുമ്പിച്ച വാതിലുകളടയുന്ന പഴുനിരപ്പുറ്റുകൾ കിതപ്പാക്കിയുലയുന്ന ചിതകട്ടി കേവലത ധ്യാനത്തിലുറയുന്ന ചുടുകാട്ടിലെരിയാതെരിഞ്ഞ തിരിയാൻ നേരുചികയുന്ന ഞാനാണു ഭ്രാന്തൻ മൂഢമുരുകുന്ന ഞാനാണ് അനാഥൻ it's a poem written uh, in the language of a madman brandon means madman okay <laughs> rachel grees no julie sorry uh, i think it's not for me another one is the mad it's a poem by k sachidanandan i think chuck is listening hello chuck okay <laughs> right okay the mad the poem by k sachidanandan and he wrote it in english and he wrote it wrote the translation in malayalam also it's a bilingual poem the mad the mad have no caste or religion they transcend gender live outside ideologies we don't deserve their in this case the language is not of dreams but another reality their love is moonlight it overflows the full moon day looking up they see gods we have never heard of they are shaking their wings when we fancy they are shaking their shoulders they hold that even flies have souls and the green core of grasshoppers leaps up on legs in a single day there is the big bang at the beginning they go on walking restless for their earth is boiling still the mad are not mad like us the poem ends in the sentence the mad are not mad like us and its translation ഭ്രാന്തന്മാർക്ക് ജാതിയോ മതമോ ഇല്ല ഭ്രാന്തികൾക്കും നമ്മുടെ ലിംഗ വിഭജനങ്ങൾ അവർക്ക് ബാധകമല്ല അവർ പ്രത്യയശാസ്ത്രങ്ങൾക്ക് പുറത്താണ് അവരുടെ വിശുദ്ധി നാം അർഹിക്കുന്നില്ല ഭ്രാന്തരുടെ ഭാഷ സ്വപ്നത്തിൻ്റെതല്ല ദ ലാംഗ്വേജ് ഈസ് നോട്ട് ഓഫ് ഡ്രീംസ് മറ്റൊരു യാഥാർത്ഥ്യത്തിൻ്റെതാണ് ബട്ട് അനാദർ റിയാലിറ്റി ദ ലവ് ഇസ് മൂൺ ലൈറ്റ് അവരുടെ സ്നേഹം nilavan the love is moonlight it overflows on full moon day pournami divasam adu karagavinyulugum and another one is stammer stammer is another poem by k sachidanandan and uh, it's a stammer is no handicap it's a mode of speech chuck a stammer is no handicap it's a mode of speech vikku oru vaigalyam alla oru samsara reethiyaan vaakkinum arthathinu medikku varunna chila maunangalayana nam vikku endu vilikkunnathu vaakkinum pravartikku medakkulla maunangale mudandanu vilikkum pole a stammer is the silence that falls between the word and its meaning just as lameness is the silence that falls between the word and the deed did the stammer precede language or succeed it is it only a dialect or a language itself these questions make linguist stammer bhashakku munbano vikkundayathu bhashakku sheshamano did the stammer precede language or succeed it 
ഭാഷയുടെ ഒരു പ്രാദേശിക വ്യതിയാനമാണോ വിക്ക് ഇസ് ഇറ്റ് ഓൺലി എ ഡയലക്ട് ഈ ചോദ്യങ്ങൾക്ക് മുമ്പിൽ ഭാഷാശാസ്ത്രങ്ങൾ എന്റെ ശരീര ഭാഷ തോൺസ് ആർ മൈ ലാംഗ്വേജ് ചോരയിട്ടിരിക്കുന്ന ഒരു സ്പർശത്തിലൂടെ ഓരോ ജീവിയോടും ഞാൻ ഇവിടെ ഉണ്ട് എന്ന് അവൻ വിളിച്ചു പറയുന്നു I announce my existence with a bleeding touch. Our Karilya, these mullugal orikkal poovugal ayirinu ennu. Once these thorns were flowers, enikku venda chadikkunna kamukar. I loved lovers who betray. Kavigalo maribhoomigalo vets chuddhyanengali lekk tirichu poyin. Poets have abandoned the deserts and go back to the gardens. only camel remainder and merchants who trample my blooms to dust who chavitti medikkunna ottrajangalum manikkalum mathram baakiyayi oru apoorva jalathinte binduvil ninnum njan oru mullu virikkunnu one thorn for each rare drop of water one thorn for each rare drop of water i don't tempt butterflies no bird sings my praise i don't yield to drowns oru pakshikkum prakirthikade oru varalchakkum valangade pachchiyude orangalil njan mattoru saundaryam srushtikkunnu i create another beauty beyond the moonlight the sight of dreams sharp piercing parallel language kinavinappuram nilavinippuram koorthu moortha oru samandara bhasha cactus Thank you all listening these things and uh, thank you very much for listening my whole presentation and I am very sad that I missed some minutes, valuable minutes here and I hope next time we can have a, a good presentation and uh, if there is any question, uh, I don't know, I can answer and if there is any question, uh, if it is answerable, I can think and uh, Uh, thank you so much so much anyone has questions mm, see the p i have written poems okay mark brown thank you mark brown see the p uh, is typing That's uh yeah. the way Julie the thank way you, you Julie. handled it was pure poetry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I got I got a really poem for first you, time so in my life listening. that my yeah, let's hear uh, it. connection was just inspired to inspired to write a poem. <laughs> anyway, Are you ready? Here it is. It's like listening a listening to Psyche sing, hearing him read, seeing his smile. Ah. It Hi. was what poetry <laughs> is. something beyond words something from the heart something yeah. pure okay true and i wished that moment could last forever Ooh, yeah i like that thank you i wished that poem you know what <laughs> it can last it can last forever okay there it is Oh, thank you. Not the line bearers. Uh, Tucker, there is... But much, you, you there read is much, poetry, it doesn't matter what language okay, you say. Okay, there is much poetry in it's your face. Just, you just <laughs> radiate poetry right from inside you. It's just absolutely good at what you're saying right here. Thank you so much. Mm. What a treat on a Saturday night in Japan to listen to you read. Oh, uh, hi, Miguel, Miguel. Any other questions? that you might have for psych about using I was really intrigued my, myself when you talked about how you brought in uh, L even an yeah, L3 you. poem you. to yeah thank you. thank you so much started a class with 
you you would read it, and then and then in addition to translation, would you would you talk about the poem, or how how would that work? Yeah, uh, normally um, in the primary classes of India, the students can learn. They can select okay. four languages. The the first one is uh, their mother tongue, and the second is uh, English, and the third and fourth will be Arabic, French. Hindi, something like that. Hindi is compulsory. Next, Hindi is the la national language. Oh, so, I come from um, a monolingual. The students can I, easily I understand so. the poems in Arabic, the poems monolingual. in Sanskrit. <laughs> yeah. So it's very easy for us. It's very I don't know the case.